Good morning. Welcome to the Unity Church of Practical Christianity, where we are pleased to welcome both those in our sanctuary this morning and those who are joining us via our Facebook live stream. For those in the sanctuary, please turn off your cell phones to prevent the sa any sounds being picked up by our Facebook microphone. And remember, maintaining social distance, we will now greet one another here uh, and at home with the silent namaste greetings of I behold the Christ in you. And for those here, um, remember uh, the camera is actually behind you today, but make sure you also wave and greet our folks at home. So please greet, greet everybody, greet yourselves real quick. I'm going to do this here. Namaste. Our mission here at Unity Church is to realize and express our oneness with God. Our vision here at Unity Church is we are a loving spiritual community where we teach, share, and express all unity in all life. Today's special music will be provided by Angelo Rapon and Julianne Tutko. In consistence with safety protocols, we remind you to keep your masks on. We will not be singing together today. Our message today by Reverend Mickey Quinton is called Moving in the Rhythm and Flow of Life. And now with your mask on, please stand 
and join me in our statement of being, please. God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with his perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And now for the reading of our scripture of today and our daily word. Our scripture is from Luke eleven twenty eight. Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. And our daily word for Sunday, October the 25th, about listen, is in the quiet of your heart, listen for the voice of spirit. During the course of a busy day, you may hear all kinds of things, all kinds of conversations, music, sounds from nature, traffic noise, and even your own constant self-talk. Sometimes all that you're hearing may numb you to the more intentional act of listening. As you listen, become aware of the voice of the Spirit. It's comforting, guiding present, feels like a homecoming. As you settle into a tranquil environment, begin to relax your body and relax your mind. Create a welcoming space for listening to the assuring voice of spirit, discernible as your inner knowing. Breathe deeply and rest in this space. And go about your day listening attentively for the voice of the spirit expressing through all the people in your life. And now Angelo will uh, lead us into our meditation uh, by Reverend Quentin. As we begin our time of meditation, I invite you to get comfortable, to feel the support of your chair or the couch or the floor, perhaps to feel your feet beneath you or grounding you to the earth. And now I invite you to close your eyes and then to take a deep breath in and out and in and out. Breathing in hope, breathing out doubt, breathing in peace, breathing out worries. And feeling with each breath that you are becoming more and more deeply relaxed. It has been said that prayer is when we talk with God and that meditation is when we listen. Meditation is a time for us to be here now, to connect with our present moment awareness. It is often in this present moment awareness 
that we feel a profound closeness with spirit. present moment awareness asks that we simply be here now, that we fully and completely experience each moment as it happens, and then let it go to make way for the next moment as it happens. We won't do that perfectly, and when you notice a thought or feeling that belongs to the past or to the future. Simply notice it and then let it go. Meditation is a spiritual practice that allows us to clear away the chatter and noise in our brains that comes from holding on to the past or trying to live in an imagined future that has not come to pass. As we focus instead on each present moment, we're able to live more fully and we're able to connect as one with spirit. It is in this place that we're able to listen for that still, small voice that is the source of love, hope, wisdom, and faith. Yes, meditation is a spiritual practice that brings us to an ever closer relationship with God within. And like all human activities, practice makes better. So let us practice living present moment awareness right here, right now. Begin by really focusing on your breath. Notice yourself breathing in, filling your lungs, and then notice yourself exhaling, emptying them. Let this be a continuous process of in and out and in and out. And now see what else you are noticing right here, right now. What are you feeling physically? What are you feeling emotionally? What do you see in your mind's eye? Just notice all the elements that belong to this present moment.
and now I invite you to focus on what you hear in the silence be still and just listen and see what it is you notice your day. Simply pause from time to time to practice present moment awareness. Taking some deep breaths and directing your attention to the here and now. We will find that the more we practice living in the present moment, the more this practice becomes our second nature. As we approach the end of our time of meditation, just continue to breathe in and out and in and out and to take whatever time you need to return to that chair or couch or floor bringing with you the sure knowledge that we are one with God who is always present for us always right here right now for us and that all we need to do to make that connection is to simply get still focus our awareness in the present moment and listen and for that we say thank you God thank you and amen
I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. Get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leaves you empty-handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. When you get the choice, set it out or dance. I hope you'll dance. I hope you'll dance. Hope you'll never fear those mountains in the distance. Never settle for the path of least resistance. Living might mean taking chances, but they're worth taking. Loving might be a mistake, but it's worth making. Don't let some hell-bent heart leave you bitter. You come close to selling out, reconsider. Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance. When you get the choice to set it out or dance, I hope you'll dance. I hope you'll dance. I hope you'll dance. I hope you'll dance. I hope you never fear those mountains in the distance. Never settle for the path of least resistance. Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance. When you get the choice to set it out or dance. Dance. I hope you'll dance. I hope you'll dance. I hope I hope you'll dance. I hope you dance. Morning, everyone. We welcome our physically present audience and our live stream audience. We are so honored and blessed to have you. And uh, if you're a first-time guest with us today, we would very much appreciate you leaving a record of your visit with us. We have uh, some visitor forms on the back table there, and we could uh, add you to our email blast or mailing list, and we would appreciate very much a record of your visit. Thank you so much for being here. We want to uh, begin to share with you today, I have... Uh, been enormously impressed with a story that I heard concerning uh, an executive who was dismissed from his position after 20 years of service. And uh, needless to say, this was an enormous blow to him because uh, uh, that job was his life. And uh, he uh, began to be in, in agony in his mind about what he was going to do after so long a service. And by the time he'd reached that age, he, he failed to see how he could land anything quite as good as that. And he began to, uh, to agonize over, you know, uh, how he was going to make up for his loss of income and, and uh, just all kinds of thoughts running through his mind, the sense of rejection of being uh, let go and, and, and just unceremoniously dumped from his company after so many years of faithful service. And all these emotions were running through his mind. And he noticed a spider scampering across the top of his desk. And uh, he just kind of swatted it away. And he noticed something. In this moment of time when he's in such turmoil, he noticed that spider immediately was able to eject some webbing 
and uh, lower itself gently to the ground. And he found himself utterly fascinated by this spider to where he was just, uh, just looking at it and pondering it and noticed that this spider didn't seem to miss a beat. He immediately began doing what spiders are inclined to do. He began to set up his web headquarters in the corner and do what uh, he is normally inclined to do. And he began to think, this little critter here that I just swatted from his place of security, scampering across my desk, and he was, he was swatted out into the unknown, he finds his footing, he, uh, he uh, finds his flow of life, and carries on just fine. And he began to ponder, you know, I should be able to do that too. If a spider can do it. He pondered how, just like he was feeling, that spider was suddenly removed from a secure place and cast out into the unknown and yet found his place once again, seemingly without missing a beat. And so it, it had an enormous impact on this man because he thought, I should be able to do that. I feel like I've been cast out. I feel like I'm into the unknown realm. And yet, if that spider could do it, surely I can. And he began to think, you know, I always wanted to write. I always felt like I had a knack for it. And he began to do some writing like he'd uh, wanted to do throughout his life. And lo and behold, in process of time, his writing began to sell. And he became a published author. He was selling books. Uh, not Maybe not the level of, you know, a... Uh, uh, some of the better known uh, writers, but nevertheless, uh, what he was writing was uh, resonating with people. And before you know it, he was selling his writings. He began to gain more income than he had in his executive position. And along with his retirement income, he found financial independence and security he had never known before. So there was great wisdom to gain from this spider. Because the spider, though he was disrupted for a moment, using his special ability that that had been bestowed upon him by nature uh, utilizing that webbing he he found himself secure again and the and the executive the executive began to realize I have gifts I have abilities I can find my place again too essentially what the spider did and what you and I have to gain wisdom from that spider about is that there is a flow of life and this spider was in it the way that it flowed with its life, with its webbing, with its unique ability, enabled it to continue right along even after being cast off the desk. And likewise, you and I, if we can move in the flow of life that we have been given, then we will regain our footing even if events of life suddenly kind of knock us out. Because how many know life happens, events happen, and they'll try and knock us out of our flow? But if we can find our flow and abide and dwell in it, we may get disrupted a little, but we'll find our way back like the spider. I want to talk to you about, I've been immensely impressed by this book, which I will continue to, to encourage everyone to read, In the Flow of Life by Eric Butterworth. It is just changing my life. And so I want to impart to you what the change that I'm experiencing and, and uh, remind all of us that the flow is what this thing is all about. Like the spider, if we can abide in our flow, life will be good. Life will continually be sweet and good for us. Like the song I was singing, finding the dance. Dancing with our particular rhythm. How many know dance is defined as a moving or a, a rhythmic rhythmic moving to dance? A moving rhythmically to music. If we Listen to the rhythm if we're aware of our particular rhythm and dance therein. How many know the music determines the dance, not vice versa? You ever see anybody just take off dancing with no music? Seems out of kilter. Some can pull it off, but generally speaking, we need to move to the rhythm of the music that's being played. And when we do that, we find that our dance prevails in our life. Our particular dance, you have a dance. You say, I can't dance. Speaking, you know, metaphorically, some of us are better at that than others. Not everybody's as good as me. Right, dear? But, uh, but we all have a particular rhythm that we need to find and a particular dance that we're called to make in our lives. 
The song speaks of, you know, uh, not, not opting to set out, but to move to that rhythm, to move to our particular uh, music. So what is your rhythm? What is your flow? That's what you need to determine. Everybody's flow is very unique. There is a, a general flow of life that we all are a part of as the human family, but you have a particular flow. You have a particular rhythm that you dance to. And when you find that, and when you abide in that, life is so good. But when it's disrupted, life can get very strange and, uh, and at times overwhelming to us. But you must become attuned to your flow. What is your flow? Do you know? We need to become aware of that, like the spider. It moved immediately into the flow of life that it knew. We must know ours. Now, you, you think about that executive. Whether or not he was ever actually in the flow of his life until that incident when he was let go from his job. Maybe he was. But maybe the fullness of the flow that he had in him would never have been realized if he had not been released from that position. How many know we don't always grasp what's happening to us? How many know that's true? At times, I don't think we're fully qualified to grasp it. Hopefully, we'll get more qualified as we walk it out. But there's times we are really not in a position to understand the event that's taking place. This guy didn't. For all, uh, as far as he knew, it was dreadful. It was terrible. He had lost something extremely important to him. But what he didn't see at that point until he saw that spider and began to walk out and find his flow again, that he was going to find something greater and more fulfilling than he could possibly imagine for his life. And how many know, you may be going through an event right now that seems to have knocked you out of kilter. And you think, it, 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 it seems bad, it seems terrible, I don't know what I'm going to do. But bear in mind, you may not be fully attuned and qualified to know what's happening. But you have a flow. And find that flow again. Don't let life throw you off of it. Or maybe find it for the first time. Realize there's a flow here. In spite of what you're dealing with, what you're going through, like that fella, there's a flow of life for you. And when you find it and when you abide in it, things are going to be great. Now concerning the flow, uh, I, I like to say it's caught more than it is taught. You can't teach it as well as you can. Uh, there's, some in, there's an intuition, there's an instinct to finding it. Uh, you could do a lot of, I could do a lot of, and I want to give you good stuff and say things that are good and helpful and inspiring and, and entertaining and funny. I want to say all that, and those are all valuable. But when it comes to the flow, it's something you have to find from deep within yourself that nobody can really instruct you, but it's just something that you find within. Charles Fillmore said he'd, he'd seen some people that got a case of metaphysical indigestion because they were consuming all kinds of facts, books, reading all kinds of stuff, lectures. They took in all this information, but in the end, that is not in itself what enables you to flow in the flow of life. It can be helpful help guiding you there, but ultimately it's not a matter of information. It's a matter of outformation. Caught more than taught. And you catch it the more that you are attuned to it. Like, like a... Our meditation day, you know, uh, prayer being the, the time to speak, meditation being the time to listen. It can be very valuable in helping us connect with our flow. We're all familiar with the expression, go with the flow. In the dictionary, this means to be relaxed and accept a situation rather than trying to alter or control it. And how many others value to that? It's time you go with the flow. Instead of trying to change or alter it, you just flow with it. There's times that's very valuable. Another definition of go with the flow, do what others are doing or agree with their opinions. There's times you go along, you think, I'm not sure I, go, I completely buy that, but for right now I'm going to flow with it. And that can be valuable. And there, there, there can come a time when you say, now I can't flow with this. Now, at this time, after this, uh, after this period of time, I'm going to have to say something that I think needs to be adjusted. But all that has value. But let me give you a definition of what I'm talking about with the flow. Can we get that on the screen? Thank you so much. The flow I'm talking about 
is a consciousness of the dynamic flow of life. That we may experience a progressive outforming of this flow in creative and dynamic ways in every phase of our lives. Let me read that again. It's just a mouthful, I know. We're talking about a consciousness of the dynamic flow of life that we may experience a progressive outforming of this flow in creative and dynamic ways in every phase of our lives. What that uh, former executive found was that he found his flow and a level of creativity that he had kind of sat on for many years. And he suddenly had an opportunity and indeed a need to bring it forth as never before. Eric Butterworth uses the word outformation as opposed to information. And it certainly does apply here. Information is knowledge received by tuition. Outformation is wisdom unfolded by intuition and flowing forth in our lives. As we said, uh, as, as Charles Fillmore said, otherwise we can get metaphysical indigestion. Because uh, information is important and we need a level of it, but there's an outformation where the flow works its way in and out through our lives. And that's what we want to find. And, you know, a lot of this is what I call the sponge effect. Because uh, generally, uh, exactly what I'm doing, I soak up this stuff, and on Sunday I squeeze it out all over you. And, and that's where I'm at in my life, because I'm relatively new to unity, but I'm soaking it up. And i got to squeeze it out on somebody. Amen. And so, you're the people I squeeze on. And, and you know, that's, that's a sound concept. Someone said, soak up, soak up uh, positive and, and enriching and enlifting things. And then when life puts the squeeze on you, that's what will come out. But if you soak up ne negativity and a sense of woe is me and, and all is unfair and the universe sucks, and how many know that's what will flow out when life puts the squeeze on you? So I want to, you know, I'm, I want to soak this up, squeeze it out on you. But how many know that's, that's something that applies to all of us? You want to soak up good stuff, and, and so you, when you're squeezed, that's what comes out. Because I, I want to move in my flow for you. And I find, you know, I can come up with all kinds of interesting and intriguing messages, but if, I don't, if I'm not in the flow when I deliver them, it's not going to have that much of an impact. You might come away, well, that, well, that was interesting, or that was funny, or that uh, was intriguing, or that was annoying. I mean, that could happen too. But if I can move in the flow, I can say something relatively simple and have a profound impact. You ever see anybody do that? They'd say something that didn't seem that, that uh, awe-inspiring or earth-shaking, but it, it, it resonated, it got deep within you and said, yes, that speaks to me. I want that. That's what I want to be for you. you may not always hit it, but I, I, want you, I, I give you my word, I'm always going to try. Because if I can speak to you in my flow, in the flow that is, part, uh, is, is granted by the Christ within me, I'll have a way greater impact on your life, and that's what I want. Lao Tzu, the great uh, Chinese philosopher, uh, father of Taoism, said something so wonderful along this line uh, long before, uh, before the coming of Jesus. He said, The human spirit has its source in the divine fountain, which must be permitted to flow freely. Anyone who flows as life flows has solved the enigma of human existence and needs no other power. Let me say that again by Lao Tzu. The human spirit has its source in the divine fountain, which must be permitted to flow freely. Anyone who flows as life flows has solved the enigma of human existence and needs no other power. That's incredible, isn't it? Lao Tzu said, that is evil which blocks the flow of creative action. That is healthy which flows with the universe. That's what I want. That's what I want to abide in. More than ever in my life, I'm thinking whatever thought or whatever uh, response I feel to any, to any event or occurrence, 
the thought occurs to me, is this in the flow? Especially in traffic, I think that a lot. When, when somebody, you know, does something so incredibly selfish and foolish to the safety of myself and others, and I think, would I be in the flow what I'm thinking? Nah, probably not. And so I come back to it. This is really helping me. Because I can get extremely annoyed with motorists. Especially the interchange where you're coming a uh, 240 uh, and there's an interchange there where there's a yield sign that might as well say keep going faster. Because nobody seems to honor it. And the other day a fellow was just going through it and I decided I'm going to teach him a lesson. I'm going to lay on my horn to punish him for this sin against me. And the fellow does not respond well to this. He suddenly breaks and swerves and tries to make it even more uh, threatening to me. And it occurred to me, you got out of the flow. I did. Because when I laid down on that horn, my purpose was to punish him. That's not the flow. And so I'm gaining some, some help in regard to that interchange, just like today. I said, watch, dear. They're going to go right through that sign. And so they did. But I'm finding the flow with stuff like that. It's freaking me out. I love this flow stuff. So, you know, uh, I want to continue to share along this line. There's, there's some things that Jesus said re re regarding the flow that we want to look at. But for right now, I'm going to leave you with that because I think you, uh, you really are connecting with me. And, and I, as always, I thank you for your kind attention. Love you all. When the weight of all my dreams is resting heavy on my head and the thoughtful words of help and hope have all been nicely said but I'm still hurting wondering if I'll ever be the one I think I am. I think I am. Then you gently re remind me that you made me from the first. And the more I try to be the best, the more I get my worst. Then I realize the good in me is only because of who you And all I ever have to be is what you made me. Any more or less would be a step out of my path. As you daily recreate me, help me always keep in mind that I only have to do what I can find. And all I ever have to be all I have to be, all I ever have to be, is what you
Thank you, Reverend Mickey, for the uh, wonderful message. That was great. Um, and we thank Angelo and Julianne and uh, Reverend Mickey for the wonderful music. And uh, Anne, forgive me. We thank you for the very peaceful and thoughtful meditation. Thank you. Now's the time for the giving and receiving of our tithes and offerings. Now, this is another aspect of our service that we are adjusting for safety. And as you access the service today, you'll find boxes outside both of our exit doors in which you can drop your offering. And those at home can find options for giving in our email blast on our Facebook and web pages. And you can also find information there about making a prayer request and or becoming a member of our church unity. Now, hold your gift in your hand Infuse it with gratitude, love, and white light as we bless them with our prayer for prosperity. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And now uh, for some additional announcements. Um, many of you kindly donated school supplies to Willow Oaks Elementary School, and we thank you. Uh, here's their thank you. I think they're going to play a video. Is that correct? Good morning, Unity Church of Practical Christianity. This is Veronica Aldridge. I'm one of the school counselors here at Willow Oaks Elementary School. On behalf of Dr. Nichols, our principal, our staff, our students, and our parents, we would like to take this opportunity to thank you for supporting us with school supplies and school uniforms. For the past several years, you all have been an instrumental support to our students, and we want to take this opportunity to tell you thank you. We really appreciate all that you have done in the way of supplying school supplies, school uniforms, and even for your presence. So a shout out to Miss Gary, whom we love and we hated to see go because she has retired. But we want to thank you and let you know that our doors are always open to you. Please come visit with us and see what we're doing when we return to a safe learning environment. Thank you so much. We love you and have a great day. We would also like to extend our thanks to Nancy Schaefer. Nancy has tirelessly staffed and managed our gift shop, which is out front there, and it's wonderful, for several years now. I'm sad to say this Sunday will be her last Sunday in that position. So please make sure you thank her. And she's leaving so she can spend a little more time with her family. And Nancy, we thank you. Let's give her a round of applause. Now, if you've been looking for a special way to serve Unity, Nancy's departure may represent your opportunity. Please speak to a board member or call the church office and speak to Julianne if you are interested in volunteering to be the leader and manager of the gift shop. We are partnering with the Memphis Angels for their annual Love Thy Neighbor Day on Saturday, November the 28th. That's Thanksgiving weekends. Now this is an opportunity to come together and take our love and unity to those in our community who are experiencing homelessness. We are collecting the following items. Hats, gloves, scarves, socks, coats. Let me read that again. Hats, gloves, scarves, socks, coats. And if you are donating gently worn items, please be sure they are clean and free of stains our holes, something that you'd be proud to wear. Now, please remain in your seats during the peace song and prayer for protection. And for reasons of safety, we ask you not to join in the singing. And at the close of our prayer of protection, our ushers will release everyone row by row, starting at the back of our sanctuary here. And when your role is released, please exit into the parking lot to avoid creating a crowded environment in our lobby. Now, the gift shop will be open for one person at a time today, and please make sure you thank Nancy. And as a reminder, there are boxes right out in the lobby there, right outside each door to receive your contribution. 
And if you are interested in looking over our church's monthly financial statements, they are posted on our collection boxes. And now Julianne's going to sing our peace song in Angelo. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternal. love of God enfolds you. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. The presence of God watches over you. And wherever you are, God is forever and ever, forever and ever. Amen. How beautiful. For those present here and those joining us online, we appreciate you choosing unity and to share this time together with us this morning. Now, our ushers will now escort us safely from the sanctuary. We hope you all have a wonderful week.